I had this particular bug uh, in the code yesterday that I was trying to squash, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what was going wrong. I was getting these temperatures that were huge. Turns out I um, I set the, the Coriolis parameter went as the cos of latitude rather than the sine of latitude. <laughs> Simple mistake. That one's going in the uh, Coding Howler Hall of Fame. Incidentally, I do actually keep a Coding Howler's Hall of Fame. If you'd like to see me talk about that next time, then comment below, because that is definitely not the worst thing I've done. After that morning of coding, though, now it's time for another swimming date with Pixel Girl. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm too lazy. Oh, God, I look so horrifically fat as well. As no, don't worry. You just look like a bunch of pixels. Don't worry. Pixel Girl. I have to find a way of like visually communicating how we swim. Bloody hell, the office is quiet. Everyone's gone home. Or oh, they're in Vienna. There's been a com that conference on this week. Uh, people are still away. But now it's just me. It's uh, half four and I'm going to be here for a bit. Yeah, Dutch angle. Why not? For the record. I am wiped. I am so, so tired. Swimming a mile at lunch only confounded that. And I'm gonna run tomorrow. But I've got work to do, so I'm gonna do it. All right, it's gone six. I am conceding defeat for today. Um, I might actually work on this over the, uh, the weekend because I feel like this is really close now. And I've said this so many times before, but yeah. It's now a problem with Fortran. Like, I, I think I know what I'm doing in terms of the physics. It's coding it up in the new language that is new to me that's causing the problems. And then Fortran's a little bit archaic. That's very much problems of its own. Still though, good day's work. Good week's work. <laughs> this morning. All right, time for the post run weigh-in. First time for a couple of weeks. I'll say that. And now it's time to undo all of that with a really big corn lunch. Actually, this is surprisingly not calorific. It's because of corn, man. Better than meat. And I'm watching my favourite stream. Today's a good day. So I've got quite a busy day today. I've got a lot I want to do. Uh, but Liv's off singing in a concert, so I've got all day to actually do stuff by myself. Uh, starting off with... A touch of framing. Long-term viewers of the channel might remember that I created a top female scientist card game, which definitely isn't top trumps, because I don't want to get in legal trouble, uh, with Dr Hannah Wakeford, who now works at NASA. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, I created a card game based on top female scientists. Uh, with Dr. Anna Wakeford, um, and they are like top trumps, basically. Here's an example card, that's Claudia Alexander, who actually has died since we made this game, very sadly. That's Maria Gerpert Meyer, who is one of the physicists in the deck. And there are 32 uh, female scientists in total. We've got uh, geologists, or paleontologists, uh, biologists, physicists, mathematicians, uh, chemists, I think that's it, um, and the idea is it's like a top trumps game, you compare uh, and like compete. If you'd like to get a set, um, you can actually print them yourself. They're, it's all completely free um, on Imager, or Imga, however you meant to pronounce it. Link down there in the description, and if you'd like to use this and you're a teacher, for example, please do. I bring this up because this is the last physical deck in my possession. We actually got a few hundred printed and we assembled by hand, and I kept one back because I wanted to frame the cards. Recently I finally took some action on this and I got one of these big A2 frames from Amazon and uh, I've actually done some work on this already, which I'll show you. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to be able to display it because we want an award for the deck. Um, I think it's a pretty cool project. Uh, the whole point of it is to raise awareness because, you know, when I went into this, there's 32 people, as I said, in the deck, and I only heard of, like, five of them. These women did amazing things. So I actually went ahead and pre-scored uh, this black card. Uh, these are the exact dimensions of the cards, and there's like a regular grid. I've got to say, I love a good regular grid. I also love this house, though one thing it does lack is 
a place to kind of do work like this, which is why I'm squatting on the living room floor on our coffee table, because we don't have a big enough desk otherwise. Oh. Definitely didn't just get my alphabet wrong then. So now I just need to glue these in place. It's like primary school. Something that I thought was interesting, if a bit sad, um, was the reaction we got to putting these online, because um, the response in person, all the people who have like got their hands on the decks and actually used them in classroom settings, we've had only positive feedback from creating the project. The one place that we've had negative feedback from, interestingly, was the feminism subreddit, um, which, <sighs> You know, I, I realise it's such a broad term that it includes so many different opinions and, and everything like that, but I just thought it was a little bit disappointing, really, in a project that was exclusively aimed at trying to promote female scientists, which is desperately needed, because these, as I said, these women did phenomenal things. I didn't know about them. I'm a scientist. Um, yeah, the fact that they didn't seem to like this was interesting. Not all of them, I'd like to point out. All of the subreddit. <laughs> the big problem that people seem to have with the project was uh, some people commenting and um, upvoting uh, we shouldn't be um, ranking these people's accomplishments and like trying to compare them because that's that's not good for the advancement of the cause. And it's like, have you played Top Trumps? Oh, I'm like Casey Neistat, with much less money. Like oh. <laughs> Ta-da! Done. Well, I need to put something in at the bottom because this went flawlessly, and I definitely didn't mess up and get it upside down the first time round. But yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with this. I don't like to play favourites, Hopper, but you're definitely my favourite. Next, I've got a whole bunch of emails to reply to, incidentally, if you've emailed me and I haven't replied. It's, it's probably not because I hate you, it's, it's because I'm terrible with emails. But it's a really nice day, so I'm going to reply to them outside. So I'm at this kind of interesting crossroads um, for me at the moment, which I hope is also translating into something interesting to watch, which is um, <clears throat> transitioning from being a lifelong student and a PhD student and kind of like a um, institutionalized learner uh, to becoming uh, an independent video maker and um, transitioning into my new career, you know. And it's it's almost like growing up Mark II, I'm, I'm becoming more in control of things like my finances because I don't get a stipend anymore, I don't get a student loan anymore, um, and actually sort of having to think as a business, I guess, um, and yeah, sort of strategizing and planning and kind of all the stuff that I thought would be boring when I was a kid and it actually turns out to be kind of cool. And what I'm doing now is um, quite a key part of that transition into being a proper adult, uh, which is getting a website. Um, and sort of designing what I want. I've had a clear vision of what I want for a while, but it actually turns out to be a little bit more complicated than just sort of taking it from my brain and putting it straight into a website. I'm using Squarespace, if anyone's curious. Um, go to uh, squarespace.com forward slash real engineering um, for, I think it's 10% off your first purchase and 14 days free. It's, like, it's not my code. It's Brian from Real Engineering's code, but I'm using it, so if you want it, you, you go ahead. You know, he's a nice guy. It's kind of a strange feeling, though. Um, yeah, like being conscious of I am marketing myself as a as a brand, as a product. It's kind of weird. I don't know how I feel about this. Better get used to it, though. Christ, I have made a lot of videos. Going through and adding thumbnails to the uh, website. Bloody hell. I, I've forgotten just how many I've made. They're all available. Go through my back catalogue. You might find something that's actually good. Oh, my days. That took so much longer than I thought it would. I'm such a perfectionist. Right, time for me to do the Facebook. No, you do the YouTube. I'm so tired, Jesus. Time for me to do the YouTube because I haven't actually made a video this week. Uh, Facebook? Really? Other than Crash Course, I haven't made a video this week, so it'd be good to actually get some vlog editing done. And at my classic editing hours. So I've not been filming much today because it's been a bit of a dull day to be honest, but I did make cakes. Yeah you do, you understand it. So now I've started editing again, um, working on the vlog, which um, hopefully the first part will be out tomorrow. I'd really like to get something out and then I need to 
get back on uh, editing Crash Course, which as you may have noticed is something of a cyclical thing. I actually get quite a few questions about how I edit and what I use, um, so I thought it might be interesting to make this mini-sode about how I edit and um, some tips that I've learned through many, many, many mistakes. To answer the kind of obvious question, for those of you who don't recognise it, I'm using the Adobe Creative Cloud, using Premiere to do basically everything. Some stuff, for example, like um, tracking Liv's face, if I need to um, do a complicated face mask I use After Effects um, and in the Beer Mile uh, sequel, the Bowling for Column Wine, I used After Effects to put the text up on screen as Dan was talking, but mostly I use Premiere. Before using Premiere I used Sony Vegas for um, all of my videos for years and that's a good cheap lightweight editor that I'd recommend to anyone. I was using version 11, um, so you know that's one to check out if you'd like something that's a little bit less intimidating than Premiere, which is like much more powerful but much more intimidating. Although I started out using Windows Movie Maker, which is terrible, at least it was. The point being though is that you shouldn't wait to get professional software before you start editing. I think that's the first thing I wanted to say is that um, editing is defined by what you produce at the end of it, not by the products you use in making it. And obviously those two are correlated, but it's very possible to make a completely you know, stunning viral video with really basic editing software. You don't need Premiere, because conversely, getting Premiere doesn't guarantee a really good video. As this channel shows. Further to that, the second bit of advice uh, which I give to anyone who's editing and thinking about doing YouTube is um, to edit. Um, there's a quote from Spielberg who said that he uh, didn't become a good director because he watched lots of films, he became a good director because he made lots of films. Um, and that's true for editing. Editing is a tactile skill. You use your hands and your brain um, and in order to get good at it you've just got to do it. One of the bits of advice I wish I'd been given earlier in my YouTube career, which I got from um, uh, the amazing Phil, I think, is that you've got to accept that your first 50 videos are going to be terrible. Um, and once you accept that, the, and the lessons you learn from those videos, you move on, then you can actually start making something that's good. And it's so, so true for editing, you know, you've got to learn by making mistakes. I could talk about this for a while actually, like in, particularly in Premiere, there's loads of tips and tricks you can do, or there's like more kind of practical things that I personally do with editing. If you like hearing about me talking about the practical side of YouTube, like how I shoot videos, how I edit them, um, the metadata side, um, Comment below because I'm very happy to talk about this stuff. I think it's much more interesting than my life because my life's not very interesting. And I feel that with breaking the vlog up into mini-sodes, um, I can do this. I can specialise them into these kind of topics without scaring people off and you know having this content lost in the middle of an episode. So yeah, comment if you'd like to see more of this. Now though, it's time to practice what I preach and get more practice editing. Because if I don't, you don't get a video to watch. And I, I wouldn't want to deprive you. So Think You is a channel that um, I met this guy at VidCon and he sent me his latest video um, which I'll link down below because this was really good, man. Like, I actually learned a few things. I mean, I've, I've been around the block of educational videos a few times. I learned a few actually really cool things from this video, so go check him out. It's a, it's a new channel. He's only got a hundred or so subs, so yeah. I think he was great. That didn't sound good. How did I just do? Oh, there we go. I've been losing weight as well. So several hours later, I've been editing and I've just finished off the first of the new vlog episodes. I'm really, really interested to see what people make of that tomorrow. Um, and I've been looking for the Crash Course stuff. One of our files is missing. That's not good. But generally, pretty productive evening, actually. Um, and a pretty productive week, sort of, to, to bring everything to a close. I realised at the start of the, of the week, I said that it was going to be one of the big breakthroughs of the PhD. And I feel like, actually, on reviewing all the stuff, having edited it, I think that we are actually really close. Um, I, I, I often sound very down in these videos because I'm always talking about the code and how it's driving me up the wall and I never quite get it. But um, I feel like I'm closing it in. It's like penning an animal into the corner. It could lash out at any point and probably bite my head off. But uh, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe the animal's a, a sloth or, or something suitably not not tiger-like. <laughs> so yeah, this has been a good week. I've enjoyed vlogging again, actually. Um, lots of exercise, lots of PhD work, a little bit of singing. Can't ask for much more than that, really. You'll be seeing me on the channel in Crash Course next week, um, along with a bunch of vlogs that I haven't finished editing yet, but I will, I swear to God, get round to. Lots of other video ideas. The PhD does get in the way, doesn't it? I can't wait to make. So yeah, I'll see you around on the channel. Do comment below what you thought of the new format of this series of vlogs, um, and maybe suggestions for what you'd like me to talk about in minisodes in the future. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Good night.